I have Dr. Tony Selvin presenting my preference from medicine four. Good morning, everyone. Presenting on behalf of Medicine 4, the topic for today's clinical meeting would be my preference. So, presenting to you, Mr. Y, 54 year old gentleman, has been admitted with acute onset weakness of all four limbs. The onset to peak was three days. Patient had positive sensory symptoms and urinary retention. He had history of diarrheal illness 10 days prior to the onset of weakness. There was no history of visual disturbance, breathlessness, swallowing, or achieving difficulty, no history of fever or joint pain rash. No history of recent vaccination or dog bite or recent vaccination or dog bite. He is a known diabetic and OAD. Explaining the history, uh, he first noticed uh, he, he consumed egg two weeks back prior to the onset of illness. Post egg consumption, he developed warm, he developed loose stools, which settled uh, after two days. Uh, subsequently, patient was kind of asymptomatic. Then the patient started noticing pain over the ankle which progressed from the ankle to the leg to the left thigh. Subsequently, patient noticed weakness of the left lower limb, which has progressed towards the left upper limb. Uh, subsequently, patient developed weakness over right upper and right lower limb, and the patient presented to OPD for further management. So on examination, patient was conscious oriented, lying comfortable, not in distress. Uh, no pickle, JVP was not elevated. Respiratory rate of around 22 per minute, saturation, uh, rest of the Vital parameters, he was vitally stable. Systemic examination, uh, CVS, RS, and abdomen were in the normal limits. CNS examination, his sensory was intact, normal. E4, V5, M6, GCS, speech was normal. Single breath count on arrival was found to be 35. Bilateral pupils were equal and reactive, no facial asymmetry or no other uh, cranial nerve, uh, cranial nerve palsy. Uh, on arrival, he was unable to hold neck, which was documented. Uh, when we examined the patient, neck holding time was adequate. Uh, he had a quadriplegia, power of 0 by 5 in all four limbs, and the reflexes were completely absent. Uh, he had intact sensation, able to differentiate art and hold, able to differentiate fine and crude touch. There were no meningeal signs. This is the detailed uh, CNS examination which we have done in our patient. Uh, power 0 by 5, cerebellum, no nystagmus, rest of the cerebellar signs could not be examined. So, presenting to you the syndrome complex of its acute onset, symmetric, ascending, flaccid quadriparesis, started with sensory symptoms and autonomic disturbance because he had uh, acute retention of urine. Examination revealed quadriplegia, areflexia with intact sensation. Differentials. Slide up. DBS, any other differences? So with the clinical presentation, the diagnosis made was GBS and uh, as to other differentials uh, considered are hypokalemic periodic paralysis or metabolic encephalopathy. And if it is a young age, then uh, uh, polio should be considered in case of acute flaccid paralysis and there was no history of dog bite. So moving on to the investigation, general examination, uh, in the routine uh, blood investigation, almost uh, anywhere in the normal range, nothing gives clue towards the guidance for further management. So BBS was negative, ABG, uh, no CO2 retention, heavy metal screen negative, MRI brain with contrast done, no abnormal meningeal enhancement of focal lesion. CPK was 75. So when we did CSF, CSF showed cell count of one uh, with proteins of 48. So cell count is nil and uh, very low and the proteins are elevated. Albuminocytological dissociation is there. Uh, when we did uh, EMG and CV, it showed motor polyradiculoneuropathy with bilateral phrenic nerve involvement. There were no evidence of active denervation in EMG. There were absolute no response to stimulation of uh, motor nerve conduction in the 
left bottom and uh, there were absent FAs, needle EMG didn't show, pick up anything and absent sympathetic response in both upper and lower limbs. So serological test which we have sent because there is complete absence of uh, impulse conduction. Uh, Cutaxonal neuropathy was considered as the variant because there is no impulse generation. Uh, it, here it's usually, uh, it affects the node of Ranvier that complete destruction of axon will be there. So we, we have sent anti-gangliocyte uh, IgGM and IgG antibody which found to be strong positive. IgM was negative. The MRI spine was done, showed mild enhancement along the surface of cauda equinor nerves, nerve roots with the clinical presentation features in favor of Gillian Barry syndrome. So the final impression diagnosis made was Gillian Barry syndrome, uh, a man variant with the presentation and uh, huge grade four. Uh, it's a motor disability grading scale. In our patient, he presented with grade of four. He's been bedridden. So the treatment which we have given in our patient, he finished uh, one five days course of IVAG two gram per kg. His body weight of 66 kg, we have given 140 uh, gram per kg, starting from 20 and day one, subsequently 30 days and subsequent days. He finished five day course. We have observed slight flickering of uh, movements in bilateral upper limbs and the bilateral uh, lower limbs, he could be able to uh, only plantar flex, only plantar flex and at the toes were noted. Rest he didn't achieve any power, significant power in this disability grading scale. So rest of the supportive measures, uh, blood pressure monitoring, pain management, providing bed source, frequent position change, uh, anticoagulation, uh, mechanical ventilation if required, regular physiotherapy, nutritional supplements. So in our patient, uh, we have finished the course of IVAG and uh, Supportive measurements are going on and we are involving physiotherapy. Once physiotherapy, once they, uh, we are, once they know how to do physiotherapy, we are planning to discharge the patient with regular follow-up. So presenting to you, Gillian Barry syndrome, it's a immune-mediated polyneuropathy. It's a quite, uh, it's a acute acquired weakness often uh, provoked by preceded infection. The pathology uh, cross reaction with shared epitos on the peripheral nerves, molecular mimicry. There are two uh, different entities. Either one is demyelination due to destruction of the myelin sheath, and second one is axon loss. Uh, the antecedent event would be uh, diarrhea. Uh, in this, among the uh, microorganisms, Campylobacter jejuni is known to be associated with uh, diarrheal illness. With um, GBS, uh, but let's not forget other organisms also like Cytomyla virus and Epstein Barr virus have also been reported. Vaccination known to uh, so, uh, vaccination also is factor TNF alpha inhibitors like infliximab, NSF, tacrolimus, isotretinoin, weakness, absent or decreased tendon reflex, may or may not have sensory symptoms or dysautonomia. So Brighton criteria, which will be used for uh, diagnosis of uh, Gillian Barry syndrome. So CSF studies, albuminocytological dissociation. CSF should be done in all cases of uh, Gillian Barry syndrome to rule out other uh, CNS causes. Uh, and the electrodiagnostic studies in a resource poor setting, the diagnosis of GBS can be well made without even without uh, EMG NCS. Uh, in this electromagnetic study, uh, Absent FAs can be seen and uh, absent response on nerve conduction velocities can be seen. Uh, so the antibodies in GBS, uh, in, these are the antibodies. Uh, these are anti-gangliocyte antibodies. Um, in our patient, he is having pure motor uh, neuron involvement. Acute motor uh, axonal neuropathy was considered and GM1 antibody was found to be positive. So these are variants of GPS uh, in worldwide. Uh, the presentation of acute inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy is the first one and uh, Aman being the second one. In India, Aman is the uh, most common variant and the recovery uh, for 18 months follow 25% achieve full recovery and good recovery with minor residual weakness will be seen in 61% of cases and partial recovery with significant residual weakness will be seen in 14% of cases. So, uh, literature review, uh, we have, uh, from the Lancet article, it's a, in, 
randomized trial of plasma exchange intravenous immunoglobulin and combined treatments in Guillain-Barre syndrome. It's an international multi-center randomized control trial involving a huge load of uh, 383 adult patients with Guillain-Barre syndrome. So the methods, the patients were randomly assigned into three groups. The first group was uh, treated with plasma exchange, five uh, sessions, 50 ml per kg, exchanges over 8 to 13 days. Uh, second group given IVAG, 0.4 gram per kg daily for five days. And the third group given uh, initial plasma exchange course immediately followed by IVAG course. The inclusion criteria, severe disease needs need for walking and uh, onset of neuropathic symptoms within two weeks. The follow patients are followed for the period of 48 weeks. So the findings, primary outcome, change in disability grading scale, uh, four weeks after the assignment. Uh, the mean improvement noted was 0.9% in uh, plasma exchange group patients and 0.8% in IVH group patients and 1.1% in patients who received both treatments. None of the differences between the groups for this major outcome criteria was significant. None, nothing showed uh, superior when compared to other. The second outcomes considered were uh, time to recovery of unaided walking and time for time to discontinuation of ventilation and trend uh, describing a recovery from disability up to 48 weeks. So uh, this is the, uh, the first graph on our left uh, showing the uh, secondary outcome uh, where all three so, uh, showing uh, same, uh, there's nothing uh, different among all three uh, interventions and uh, uh, the graph on the right shows uh, recovery is very slower and the bottom one is weeks. So even after 10 weeks, a uh, patient will have uh, disability grade, just maximum of one grade they're improving if, if at all they're having recovery. Uh, if at all they are having uh, improvement. And uh, demyelinating variant, uh, uh, the average duration of stay would be uh, six to 11 days and uh, axonal neuropathy will, have, uh, will be uh, lasting for double the duration of demyelinating illness. So interpretation, uh, in treatment of severe Guillain-Barre syndrome during first two weeks after onset of acute neuropathic symptoms, Plasma exchange and IVAG had equal and efficacy. The combination of plasma exchange and IVAG did not confer a significant advantage. So uh, what to prefer, whether it's IVAG or PLEX? Uh, IVAG uh, preferred in view of ease of use. PLEX preferred in view of cost effectiveness. The IVAG uh, price alone for, uh, let's say, 60 kg adult man, uh, the price will come around 1,90,000. Uh, plex, the cost of plex would be, uh, it will come around 90,000 to 1 lakhs, but uh, the complications are more in plex, like client-related infection, uh, hypotension, recurring hospital stay, ICU. Uh, so these uh, rest of the things will will be, uh, that also making significant cost and equalizing this IVAG cost. So complications are more with plex, but uh, we do remember uh, both as, uh, equal complications. It's like a uh, plexus more. So efficacy none is superior than the other. So uh, the summary uh, take home points would be IV aging plex has the same outcome. Uh, the patient may get worse during the treatment and that does not mean the treatment has failed and choose one treatment and stick, stick with it unless complication and counsel the patient that recovery takes several weeks that we have noticed uh, earlier. And uh, they, they should be keep on uh, follow up. And uh, during every follow up, uh, disability grading scale, we will assess and uh, support you and encourage physiotherapy. So, thank you. Any questions from the audience? Good presentation, Tony. Only thing is that you said that we gave five days of IVIG. That's too early to. Access for improvement, no? Go back to your uh, results, those graphs of your... Yeah, look, look, yeah. look at the first one, top left-hand corner. Proportion of patients able to walk, walk independently, no? So 50% yes. can walk by 60 days and 80% by 120 days. So it's too early to ask. You definitely there was no further progression in your future. Sure. Uh, so very early to assess improvement then. We noticed uh, okay. he is having good, okay. but we are not uh, expecting improvement in less and than you 14 counsel days. the patient and family, that's important. That's yes, sir. Ready. 
Uh, you mentioned that. He presented to you, uh, what's the neck muscle weakness seen in ED, is it? Like or somewhere else? Uh -huh. In ED. In Nero has seen the documented, but when we have seen patient at a but neck holding time more than 30 like seconds. On NCS, there was bilateral phrenicloplasia. Yeah. He went to ICU in view of uh, night. Was one... mechanically ventilative? No. Did he, did he did not require ventilation? No. Did he progress after that? No. No. Bulbar, bulbar, no. Right. All cranial nerves are normal. No questions, we'll move on to the next case. Thank you, Tony. Thanks. Uh, next will be Dr. Prem Ragul from Medicine 2 presenting Mind You Gut. 